Hello and welcome to this 21st session on DaVinci Resolve and our seventh one on color grading. Now, let us practically do some practical examples and let us work by working on some projects and learn about color management. So, to begin with, uh, the resource files that is required or the source files that is needed for this uh, session it has been already uploaded and the link is shared with you it is available with the resources and if you are watching it in uh, on uh, youtube uh, actually if you go to the description you have a link here if you click on this link this will take you to the google uh, page and uh, here click on download and when it asks for this down click on download anyway here and uh, wait till this file gets downloaded into your machine fully downloaded now this is around approximately i think uh, 390 mb so you can just move it into the folder where you are uh, working on your project lessons say for example here uh, in a folder in a lessons file folder i am going to paste this and once i paste this I will uh, just right click on this and uh, I am going to extract these files. I will extract these files to a folder and once I extract it, if you open this folder, what you actually see is a .dra file. So, I told you already have told you .dra represents DaVinci Resolve archive. So, how do we get this archive into DaVinci Resolve? It is very easy for this first now launch DaVinci Resolve, wait for DaVinci Resolve. Okay, now in this uh, project window now, right click here and choose here the option restore project archive. So, click on restore project archive and now move to advanced color and in your lesson files select this advanced color and select this dot DRA folder color page video part 2 dot DRA folder click open. So, when you click on open now you are presented with a new project color page underscore video part 2. So, just double click on this to open this project. So, once you open the uh, project you are directly moved into the color page now click on the clips here to see the clips and you can see uh, around 10 clips presented over here and also click on timeline to see the timeline. And now, we are going to start by understanding color management. What is color management? Color management means say for example, when you are seeing the clips here, see the very first two clips are taken in black magic camera and they are raw footages. We have taken the raw footages as it is. Whereas, the third clip is taken from a different camera and you can see this is an Apple ProRes 4444 uh, compression or Kodak file. So, this is a different clip. Then we have one more clip with DN XR HQX clip. This is another popular Kodak. So, these two are from different cameras, these two are from black magic design. So, we have basically here three different types of clip. Out of these 10 clips, we have around 4 clips with black magic raw and uh, 3 clips with DN into HR, HQS and uh, 1 clip with Apple ProRes. So, this is what our clips are. Now, to begin with, we want all these clips which are shot in different cameras to work under one color space and this is what we are going to do first in DaVinci Resolve. So, now here actually this Apple ProRes and DNxHR these two are called as the transcoded clips means the raw clip is actually trans the color information is transcoded and here the color is treated slightly in a different way rather than this black magic raw clip. Now, one thing we first have to do is 
we have to bring all these clips into one color space. The reason why we do is, see normally once we complete all our editing and once we do the color grading, then finally and uh, actually before we do the color grading, we have to first decide for which uh, that is platform we are building our video. Say for example, you are editing a cinema, your final deliverable will be for a cinema that is you have to give it in a particular format which is a deliverable meant to project it in the theater. Whereas if the same clip if you want to give it for television then the color standard used will be different. Similarly if you want to give it for Netflix or Amazon the color standard will be different and similarly if you want to give this for streaming platform or on the internet then its color standard will be different. So, if we are not going to do the color management then actually what we may have to do is we have to do our color grading again and again for every different standard. So, it is a very cumbersome job. So, that is why when we use color management what happens is it will set the starting point of all the clip it will be set to one color space and now once you have done the color grading when you change the deliverable from cinema to television or when from television to OTT platform or to streaming platform the job of converting the color space to that particular color space will be carried out by the software. So, it is always better to do this color management right before we start our editing or color grading. So, let us see how we do this color management. So, for this we have to first do the color management and how we do the color management is this color management is present in the project setting. How do we go to the project setting? In your DaVinci Resolve window on the right hand corner you see a gear wheel which is nothing but the settings uh, uh, this represents the settings. So, when I click on this the project setting window opens here. So, this is the project setting window and in this menu on the left hand side you have color management. So, when I select color management by default the color management is set to DaVinci YRGB. What does this mean is right now the color management is disabled. If we want to enable the color management the very first thing I have to do is in the color signs click on this drop down and choose DaVinci YRGB color managed and as soon as I click on it automatic color management right now disable this automatic color management and once you disable this then you have color processing mode you have various color processing modes available here you can see so many color processing mode one is REC 709 and uh, you have REC 2020 you have so many uh, thing you have the HDR wide gamut uh, HDR intermediate so you we have so many options present over here now, in this case you can see the description presented over here and in this for my purpose I want to use a wider gamut of color. So, that in future if I change it there should be no data loss for that right now here I am going to use this HDR DaVinci wide gamut interface. So, I will use this option and extra wide gamut log grading environment suitable for SDR HDR deliverables preserves maximum image fidelity and highlight detail. So, I am going to use this processing mode and then if I come to output color space when I click on it you have various color spaces available and the color space that you choose here is actually dependent on 
your monitor. So when you are using a monitor, especially when you are using an expensive monitor like Apple color screen display, when you purchase your monitor, the gamut range of your monitor will be defined by these standards. Right now, the monitor that I am using is Samsung and its gamut range is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So I am going to choose this. Most of the monitor comes under this gamut range. However, you can just go to your model of monitor and find out what is its output color space and you can select it here. So this we have set the color processing mode to the maximum range of HDR DaVinci wide gamut and then we have set the output color save, uh, space to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Now actually when it comes to cinema, when you distribute your cinema in multiplexes or in PVRs, the technology that is used in all PVRs, multiplexes and theatres can be broadly classified into two platforms. One is Cube and another is UFO and actually in 2017 these two business groups merged together and today we have one single platform called as Cube Digital. So if you are doing for cinema, then in DaVinci Resolve, the output color space should be chosen which is suitable for this format. So we have to find out what is, uh, so actually it will be somewhere in ST 2084, 4000 nit, it comes somewhere here for Cube. So, this standard has to be used if you are doing your editing for a cinema which will be projected in multiplex theatres in India. So, basically right now, I am now going to use my monitor color space and this monitor color space that I have is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So, with these sections done in color space, once I have done this color uh, management, then before I click save, slightly move this to the side. You are having a clip here and as you are seeing the clip, see this is the original clip before saving it. But as soon as I save, you can see the change in the color format. See if I click save, see automatically you can see some change in the color. So, once we have colored managed it, all our clips are going to become with more colorful or you will have, you will start seeing greater details, okay. So, say for example, I select this first clip here and with this first clip here, I will come to settings and you, I will just move it down and if I select DaVinci RGB and if I save it, See now, the, what is the color scheme you are seeing, okay. Now the same thing if I use YRGB color manage and in color uh, processing, I am going to now use uh, uh, SDR only and uh, I will disable automatic color management and in color processing mode, I use HDR DaVinci wide gamut and in output color space, I use a Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 and with this setting done, if I click on save, see how the color changes, okay. So this way, this is the first step that we have to follow before we start our editing. We have to set our color working space. Now just navigate through all these uh, clips here and you can see that now all these clips have a same have the same starting color space. So now when you edit it, when you do the color grading and when you shift the standard from cinema to TV or streaming, when you finally render it, the deliverables will maintain the same consistency. So you can just preview all these clips once. And now one more thing here you have to understand is, when we, when this uh, DaVinci Resolve software is automatically matching your colors, the DaVinci Resolve camera should have the metadata of your camera color space, in what color space the video has been shot. In case of raw 
footage most of the raw footage will uh, automatically get actually graded in davinci resolve because davinci resolve as the version improves it supports all the latest raw uh, files that is currently available in the market to give you an example now you have two black magic raw files and to know whether your davinci resolve is supporting or not you can again come back to setting here and if you come to camera raw and in raw profile see you have ari black magic raw canon cinema dng nikon raw panasonic phantom red sony so all these formats are supported and if by chance if it is not here in this list then what you may have to do is you have to manually match it for this i will click cancel here and coming back here say for example uh, you have some clips here i will select this apple prores 434444 clip and since this clip is not a raw file this has been transcoded so when a raw file is transcoded it is going to lose some amount of metadata and so now what happens is davinci resolve will not be able to correctly identify what was the color space in which this shot was taken and in this case what you have to do is you have to first find out in which camera this shot was taken and when you are going to use it you can manually match it by just right click on it and you have one option here called as input color space and in input color space you right now this is shot in a black magic design 4k film generation 1 camera okay so this has already been set so if you have shot it on canon you can use the canon if you have you shot it on dji camera you can use dji if you have shot it on nikon you can use nikon if you have shot it on red camera you can shoot red if you have shot it on ariflex camera you can choose it here so we have to manually set this input color space okay so this is this has to be done for all clips which are present with transcoded if you have apple prores or dnx or even this clip if i right click and if i choose the input color space this input all this input color space has actually been automatically set to black magic design 4.6 film gen 1 so it has already been actually mapped so if it is not mapped if you have shot say for example in some sony camera then you can right click here come to input color space and here in this list you have to find out sony and from your camera you have to find out what is its gamut value whether it is s gamut s log or s log 2 and you have to select it so right now all my clips are shot in black magic design camera so in input color space black magic design we are using this 4.6k film gen 1 setting okay and in some cases say for example in these clips if i come to the final clip here the final clip that you are seeing here has been color managed by davinci resolve but due to this color management i am seeing this image with too much saturation there is high level of saturation and i feel it a little awkward or little uh, unnatural and i doesn't want this to be the starting point and in that case i can come here right click and choose the option bypass color management and when i choose bypass color management then this clip will not have that color space applied however the disadvantage with this change is say you are editing and you are doing the color grading for cinema and the same video if you want to also send it for television and in the deliverable when you change your color space or when you change your setting this clip is not going to react it will not automatically get adjusted so it's always uh it's not uh, good to bypass this color management only in very rare cases you have to do it and if you are bypassing it then you have to see that if you are deliverable changes the color grading has to be 
readjusted. Okay, so now in some cases, if all your clips you know that are shot in the same camera, so you know that all the clips are using the same black magic camera or all the clips have been shot in Ariflex or all the clips are shot in iPhone 15 Pro. Then what you can do is instead of individually changing this input color space, right click and set this input color space. If all the clips have the same standard, then what we can do is I can click on this settings again and coming back to setting, I will come back to color management and now in color processing mode, I will click here and in the list, I am going to choose the custom option and when I choose the custom option, you get more options here and in this option, now I can change the input color space here. I can click here and now I can select whichever camera I am using here. I can see the list of all cameras array log 3, log 4. So, I can choose my input color space once for the entire project and the entire project will have the same color space. So, right now I will cancel this, I will not may apply this cancel. So, I will just cancel it and leave it to my default setting. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this node editor. So, in the previous session we understood node editor is basically used to organize our color grading. So, in our previous session, we did all the color correction in one node, we added a new node and we controlled all the contrast, we added one more node and we added looks. And now, today I just want to do some experimentation about what happens if the order of the node is changed. That is, if we have multiple nodes, if you change the order of the node, how it is going to affect the image? That let us have a look at this by performing some exercises on this. Now, in this case, say for example, the very first clip that I am seeing here, I want to convert this image into a monochrome or a black and white image. So, how are we going to do it? with the first clip selected and with this first node selected, I will come to my primary color wheels and if I come to saturation, if I click here and if I set the value of saturation to 0, you can immediately see that the image has turned black and white because I have removed the saturation completely. Now, instead of doing this uh, monochrome conversion using the saturation. The more better way of doing it to have more control is uh, I will reset, I will just double click on this sat to reset it to the default value 50. Now, in these panels, I will come to a panel here called as RGB mixer. Come to this RGB mixer panel. And here you can see a button called monochrome. So, when I click on the monochrome button, now see what happens is as soon as I click on monochrome, you can see in all the three channels, we have only one control and we now have the option of controlling our monochrome colors for red, green and blue channels. So, now what I can do is, if I come to the red channel, say for example, here in my black and white image, her face is getting too dark, it has become dark. If I want to add more brightness to her face, the face actually contains the red channel. So, now what I will do is, I will come to this red output and I will drag and increase the red and as I increase the red, you can see in the image the red area becomes brighter. So, I will move it to around 1.55 and similarly, uh, if I change the green, see the green area, the brightness of the green areas is changing and similarly, if I change the blue, the sky area details is going to change. See, you can see the variation. 
So right now I will reset blue and green to the default value and keep the red input more so that I have more details in the face. I am now going to come to this node right click and I am going to give it the node label as BW means this is a black and white correction. Now after this I am going to add a new node. So I can you already know that to add a new node you have to just press alt plus s in windows and option plus s in mac. So right now or otherwise you can come here add node add serial. So this is going to add a new node. I want to add a sepia tone image or sepia tone look to this image now. So for this for the second node I am going to right click add node, uh, node label and I am going to call this as sepia and then for this to make it turn sepia I will come to color wheels and in gamma setting I will just drag this slightly towards red like this. So when I drag it towards red slightly like this so you can now see it has turned the sepia tone. So now I want to ask you a question. Now if I interchange these two nodes what will be the effect on the image. So by changing the order whether whether it is going to affect my end result well surely it is going to affect it. So right now here this is enabled I will just click power window and I will off it ok. Then now to actually switch these two nodes one of the way of switching this is I will select this sepia node and I will extract it out from my path. See normally here this is my input original image the input original image is coming over here and we have applied the black and white gray and this black and white output is going to sepia node and from the sepia node it is going to the output. So now I will select this sepia node and I will extract it out from this path. So to extract it just press E on your keyboard. So when I press E you can now see this has got separated. So now you have only this black and white node and sepia node is disconnected. Now to get this sepia node before this I will just move it I can just drag it in between these two lines like this and once it turns yellow if I drop it see now you have sepia and then the black and white. So now what happens is so in this case see if I when I change the order naturally your final picture will be black and white only. But without sepia node the black and white color was different but with sepia node you are seeing it more brighter and the reason for this is because in sepia what we have done if I disable black and white you can see we have increased the red and then in black and white when we did this RGB mixer we have increased the red output. So now since we have added the sepia node the picture without sepia and with sepia has an effect on the image. So this clearly states that the node order is very much important when it is connected in serial the node order when it changes it impacts the images. Once this experimentation is done now I want to save this grid. So for that what I will do I will come back to my gallery and in gallery you already have this stills one I will click on it and I am going to rename this as experiment because we are doing this as experiment and in this album I am going to come over here right click and choose grab still and I am going to click down here and I am going to name this as node order ok. 
and after I have saved my actual uh, grading here, I will come back here and I want to remove all the grades right now applied to this clip. So, how do I remove it? Just right click in this area and choose reset all grades and node and the default keyboard shortcut is if you press control plus home button on your keyboard then all your grading will be removed and you have your original clip and one thing now you have to remember is see you have this is the input RGB values it is going over in this green channel it is applying to this node and whatever change you do it in this node output will go over here and apart from this green channel you have one blue channel and this blue channel represents mask. So, if you have done some green screening or if you have applied the mask in one node you can apply the same mask to the next node by connecting through this blue channel. So, green is for the RGB signal blue is for alpha or for the mask. And now the next thing I want to discuss about is destructive color grading and non-destructive color grading. So, now first I am going to show you what is this destructive color grading. So, to give you an example now in this case I am going to actually remove off all the details in the shadow and make it pitch black. So, here in the scope you can see the black level and I am going to remove all the detail in the black level I am going to crush it out and for this node I will right click and I am going to add a node label as lift and now I am going to select this come to my color wheel and in lift I am just going to drag it to left and reduce the value to maximum say for example I will make it as dark as possible say I make it approximately say around minus 2 point, uh, 0.2 ok. So, I will set it to minus 0.2 and when I make it minus 0.2 now you can see in the graph if you come here see what has happened if I disable this node see this was the detail you had in the shadow area and once I applied the lift see what happened all this have got crushed below the 0 and you are not able to see this. So, this detail has been totally crushed ok. Now, one question I want to ask is we have crushed all the signals here to make you understand better. I will change this from parrot to waveform and you can see all my signals are crushed here. Now, can I restore this signal back? Ok, let us try it. So, for this what I will do is I will right click here and I will add another serial node or I will press alt plus. So, now to recover this say for example, uh, someone else have done this color grading and using the lift they have crushed all the contrast here and in the next node I want to regain it. So, this is the lift node and in the next node I will just right click and I am going to name this as curves and now I decide to restore back my detail here. So, to restore this I am going to now use a different method which is the curves. I will come to curve and coming to curve now uh, what I am now going to do is I am now going to add some. So, to bring this mid tones brighter I will add some point over here click here and I am going to drag it like this to bring the detail back, but as I drag you can see even in the waveform you can see and also in the image you can see that the data cannot be restored by moving this mid tone. As I am moving the mid tone you can see the image is actually getting worse you have too much of contrast, but however 
I am not able to get back this detail. The reason why I am not getting back is in the previous node when I crushed it, I used the lift and here I am trying to regain it using the gamma. So, now what I will do is instead of this if I right click and delete this node and I will come back here to this start node, this node and lift is the same. So, instead of increasing the gamma, if I increase this lift, you can now see if I proportionately increase it by 20 units because I had uh, crashed in the previous by minus 20 percent. So, if I come here and if I add it by 20 percent, now you can see the original detail and also you can see in the graph the original detail has been restored. Okay. So, now one thing you may feel now is, so you may think that if I manipulate my digital data, if I crush the details, I can restore it. Then one thing you have to remember here is, sometimes what happens is when you are doing the color grading to crush the black area, you might have not just used the lift, you might have used contrast, you might have changed the pi weight value. So, when you have used multiple controls, if you want to restore it back, you have to restore the negative value of all those controls and it is a very cumbersome process. So, that is why when you are doing color grading, always remember that whenever you are crushing the detail. So, if you come to the graph and when you are crushing the detail by suppressing the shadows or increasing the highlights, if you are crushing, crushing the detail, this kind of color grading should be always applied at the end and not at the beginning. So, the order of color grading is always to see that initially do not worry about the looks, see that your graph has the maximum detail without losing any of the detail or not getting any of the signal crushed. This is called as corrective grading. You apply all the corrective grading and if you want to increase the contrast or if you want to increase the highlight, then you do it at the end. So, when you bring it at the end, then you can avoid this destructive grading. Destructive grading means in a grading when you crush away some of the details or some of the information and if you try to recover it from some other method, you may not be able to recover it fully. So, I think this has given you an idea about the order of color grading. So, now with this I will conclude this session and let us continue our experimentation with this color management in our next session. Thank you.